Actually, the first question um, would be concerning this um, killing of Bin Laden or, yeah. or, 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 well, I'm not sure if there are similar cases, but other cases. Um, are these targeted killings or are these capture or kill um, orders? Yeah. Do you have any idea about that? We have some very tantalizing clues about that, but we don't have any definite answer. Uh, my personal belief is that the soldiers who carried out the killing of Bin Laden were under orders to kill him and not to capture him. Um, and that is a belief based on what I think would have been the political difficulties for Obama had Bin Laden been captured. Uh, and, and I think there was enormous relief on the part of even some on the left in the United States that Bin Laden was not captured. Uh, because if you think the debate about human rights in the United States has been disappointing for the last 10 years, uh, imagine what it would have been like had Bin Laden been captured. Uh, there would have been open calls for him to be tortured. Um, there would have been a huge debate about whether he even could be brought to trial at all. And I should say here that one thing that we have not seen for 10 years, the alleged perpetrators of the 9-11 attacks have not been brought to trial. They still have not been brought to trial. They're sitting in Guantanamo. Uh, so I have a strong personal belief that the orders uh, were to kill him. Uh, they have claimed otherwise. Um, they have stated in congressional testimony and public remarks that the orders were to capture or to kill him. Uh, but given the shifting nature of the accounts of the killing, in the first two days we heard three or four different stories. There was a firefight, there was not a firefight. There were human shields, there were not human shields. Uh, he had a weapon, he didn't have a weapon. Um, I, I think that it's, it's fair to say that this operation was intended to kill him. Now, that doesn't necessarily answer the legal question. It depends whether you believe, as the United States government does, that it is the U.S. is engaged in an armed conflict against al-Qaeda. This is a debate even among human rights advocates, whether it's possible to have an armed conflict against an organization like this. Uh, and not against uh, a government or against a more regional group. But if you do believe that, then uh, you can make the argument, as even some human rights organizations have, that targeting the leader of that militant organization would be legal so long as he's not in the act of surrendering. Uh, now, of course, killing someone who's surrendering is a war crime in any circumstances, uh, in any kind of armed conflict. Uh, but, but this has raised difficult questions. And, and what we have been advocating is for more transparency. Why have we not even seen video of this? Of course it was videotaped. Um, why have we not had testimony from people who were involved uh, in this raid? I, one thing that you can say at a minimum is the question of whether the killing of bin Laden was lawful is an important question. It's not a trivial question. Um, and it's a debate that no one in the United States has wanted to engage in. Very few people in Europe also have wanted to engage in. In fact, uh, President Obama said that anyone who wants to question it should have his head examined. Uh, a Democratic leader in, in Congress, this is the Democratic Party, uh, the Liberal Party, said that Americans should shut up and move on and not ask questions about it. That, that, uh, and, and of course, when, when a president like Obama is the one who carries this out, uh, there isn't a lot of room in the American political discourse for someone to criticize it. Uh, I wonder whether there would have been more criticism had this been carried out under uh, President Cheney. Yeah. Obviously that's another thing. I was also thinking of people like Ben Abid, the, 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 uh, the other um, supposedly masterminds behind um, the 9-11 attacks, and they were actually captured. And, um, and not killed at least some of them. But I was wondering about what you said. Is it a question of law or is it a crime? Because that seems to be a crucial question. Considering uh, the German terrorist past with the Red Army faction, uh, the German state never um, said, this is, uh, this is a war. Right. And they are not prisoners of war. But these are, were just uh, criminals. So uh, one wonders, you know, without having the legal expertise, uh, why uh, wouldn't right. this apply to, uh, to the 9-11? Um... And even in Spain, where you had a much more similar attack in Madrid, 
Uh, yes. You didn't see Spain building a military detention camp and throwing the people in it who were, who were associated and saying that they were unlawful enemy combatants. No, they brought them to a court and they prosecuted them, they convicted them, and they sent them to prison. Uh, this is the, not only the more correct way to handle terrorism, it's the more effective way uh, to handle it than what the United States um, has done. And, and, and you have, uh, it's hard really to explain how politicized this debate has become in the United States. Uh, but really, uh, I don't know how else to describe it except that it's a kind of identity politics, that, that the, the people who treat terrorism as a war uh, are people who want to consider themselves warriors. Uh, and you have this bizarre discourse where uh, people who treat this as a military issue are considered strong, uh, and people who think this is an issue of law and justice are considered weak, which is exactly upside down. Because in this context, law and justice exist to punish crime, uh, and the war framework has really aggrandized and elevated um, these terrorists. It's the status that they, call, that they seek for themselves. Uh, and, uh, you know, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, the alleged architect of the 9-11 attack, he doesn't think he's a criminal, he thinks he's a warrior. Uh, and, and we, strategically even, we play directly into their hands when we cast this issue as one of war rather than as one of, of crime and, and murder. So. Yes. What do you think most probably, what do you think most probably would have happened if Bin Laden was caught, not killed, in the United States? Yeah. Well, I, that, the question is what would have happened, what would have happened, not what should have happened, but what would have happened, <laughs> yeah. um, had Bin Laden been caught. And, and it, it, it's so inconceivable to me that it, it, it hardens my conviction that this was never an option. Uh, that, that this was not something that could have been possible. Because uh, already, the United States Congress is trying to, and has already, you know, legislated to prevent anyone in Guantanamo from being brought into the United States, even as our diplomats fly around the world and ask Germany and Belgium and Algeria and Bermuda to take detainees from Guantanamo so the prison can be closed, not, not one from Guantanamo has ever been brought into the United States uh, because of the fear that's been generated about who these people are. So the probability that he would have been brought to New York, where he should have been brought to face trial for murder, if in fact he had evidence, uh, to me is very low. Uh, and I think there would have been an immediate demand by many uh, in the United States to send him to Guantanamo. Uh, and that's not something the Obama administration wanted to do. Uh, they don't want to essentially concede that Guantanamo is forever, uh, rather than a legacy problem for President Bush. So I really, uh, it, it's, a, it's a fantastic question. Uh, and it's a question that I think highlights um, how uh, almost certain it is that the order to those soldiers was to kill him and not to capture him. I, I only have one question that's relating to the Guantanamo issue yeah. because you had this introductory remark about uh, Bush, the war criminal, uh, uh, having been replaced by Obama, the professor of constitutional law, I think you said. So, um, and you know, and you also mentioned how sympathetic people were towards Obama, especially in Germany, I think all over Europe. Yeah. This did have to do with Bush as well, but um, how, how come? that this um, man who's familiar with law, let's put it that way, um, ends up doing uh, the things he does. For example, the issue of Guantanamo. He said this has to be closed within a year. Um, is it, was it his fault that, it's not being, that it hasn't been closed, or was it that, Cong that Congress and you know, the public debate pushing Congress to enact laws preventing that Guantanamo would be closed? Uh, the, the answer is that it's both. Uh, one of my colleagues, I think, said something very smart. He said, the Republican Party practices the politics of fear, and the Democratic Party practices the fear of politics. 
and, and so you have no party for human rights um, in the United States. I think Obama had a moment. He had about a six-month window where he had all the wind behind him, where he could have spent some of his political capital on these issues. Uh, and I think that he was advised by very smart and very cynical people not to do that. And you have to remember who he was. Um, this was a 47-year-old man who four years earlier had been a state senator in Illinois, which is a nothing position in the United States, uh, who was already a historic president by virtue of his race and background, uh, who was widely distrusted by the intelligence agencies and the military, uh, and who didn't believe, or whose advisors didn't believe, that he had the political strength to take on the national security state, which has existed in one form or another since World War II in the United States, uh, and is more powerful than any United States president. Uh, it doesn't mean that presidents can't influence it, and can't move it, and can't shape it, uh, but presidents every morning at 7 o'clock are briefed by the intelligence officials on the threats in the world. Uh, and I just don't think that he felt prepared to send those people to prison uh, for the crimes that they had committed in the seven years before. Uh, and this is why he came into office with the slogan, the mantra, we have to look forward and not look backwards. Well, I'm sure every person who's accused of a crime and brought before a court would love to say to the judge, let's look forward and not look backward. <laughs> let's not look back at some of the regrettable things that I'm accused of doing. Uh, but this was, make no mistake, this was a political calculation uh, on the part of President Obama and his advisors that he either didn't have the strength to carry out these promises, um, or that it would undermine the rest of his agenda. Now, on Guantanamo in particular, I think you have to blame Congress, because uh, you know, Senator McCain, who was Obama's opponent, said that he would have closed Guantanamo on his first day in office. So during the campaign, there was a consensus that it had to be closed. And had McCain been elected, it probably would have been closed. Um, but because Obama was elected, it was seen as an advantageous political issue for his opponents to portray this person with a Muslim name as someone who was weak on terrorism, uh, and not to allow him to do any of those things. Uh, now again, he could have done some of them anyway, over their objections, but it would have forced him to spend some of his political capital uh, that he was unwilling to do. I think that his decision not to do that is a historic mistake. Um, and it won't even eventually succeed. Uh, you cannot simply put a lid on crimes against humanity and hope that they'll never come out again. Uh, and every regime that has ever tried to do that has found out at some point that it doesn't work. Uh, but it can take a long time. It can take a whole generation sometimes. Uh, I don't think General Pinochet thought that he would spend his last years of his life running away from a judge in Spain. Um, and, and so I do think that eventually, um, through coordinated work around the world, um, the, the years of the Bush administration will be reopened, uh, and some of these policies will be reconsidered. But, uh, but uh, oddly enough, it's it, in some ways in the United States harder for a liberal Democratic president to do that than it would be for a conservative Republican president to do that. And maybe that's why that's true everywhere. Uh, it was Nixon who went to China, not Kennedy. Uh, 